What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bullshot Darts. So I'm going to try something new this weekend. I'm up in Philly for the CDC, and instead of making one super long video recapping the weekend when I get home, I thought I would try to make a couple shorter videos throughout the weekend. So today I'm going to be talking about yesterday's event number one on Friday night, and it was possibly my weirdest day of darts ever. I got two really big wins, one against Danny Lauby, which is hands down my biggest darting victory. And I'm not even happy about it. That's how weird yesterday was. So we'll be talking about that in a second here, guys. But first, if you are new, please make sure that subscribe button. It's Bullshot's mission to grow the sport of darts. And also go check out bullshotdarts.com. I'll be having my shirts for sale up on there soon. And I actually just got a compliment on this shirt when I was at Starbucks. And that's one thing I'm really going for Bullshot is that it's not just for dart players. Even non-dart players will find this stuff cool. Uh, so that's the plan to get you know the bullshot name out there and kind of subliminally implant darts in people's minds with it and hopefully that will help grow the sport so make sure you guys keep an eye out for my first shirt release all right guys so let's talk about yesterday like i said it was an absolutely weird day of darts so i drove from chicago to philly about 14 hours i slept in my car thursday night and i was rushing to get here i thought i had some extra time to where i could relax but I didn't, so I rushed to the venue, and I got there like five minutes before check-in closed, so I was running around trying to get in, check-in, and instead of sitting down and relaxing, I took out my darts and was like, okay, I need to practice, even though it was going to be at least an hour until the event started, but I my mind was just so scrambled up, so I pick up my darts, and I'm warming up, I'm shaking a lot, I can barely hit the 20, let alone the triple 20, and I was like, okay, I need to just sit down and take a break, so I sat down, relaxed. Uh, you know, there was a lot of people there, of course, so it's been a while since I've seen everyone, so I did some socializing, talking, and that really helped calm me down. And then I got on a practice board with a couple people I had just met, and uh, a friend, Ryan Freery, I've talked about him before, we've gone back and forth playing. Uh, we expect to play each other this weekend sometime, but... So it was nice to just talk to these guys. Danny Baggish was there, uh, so it was cool, you know, to see him throw, and... Yeah, so I started feeling really comfortable during warm-ups. I was like, okay, I'm ready for the day. I think I'm going to shoot really well. I was feeling better than I felt at other tournaments where I ended up throwing 90-plus averages. So going into the tournament, I was feeling really, really good with my darts. So this is where the whole weirdness and the bipolarness of this day starts. So I look at the bracket. It finally gets called, and I got Alex Spellman in my first round. Now, if you don't know who Alex Spellman is... You need to do some research because this guy is an animal on the dartboard and he just won the CDC, I think the CDC shootout in Washington. Uh, it was less than a month ago. He beat Danny Baggish in the finals. So he has been on fire lately and I got to play this guy in the first round. And then I look on the next step of the bracket. If I manage to get by him, I got to play Danny Lobby. <laughs> so like right when this tournament starts, I'm like, holy cow, like I got a tough draw. But my darts are feeling so good in practice. I'm like, I'm game. Like, let's go. If any day I was going to have these matches, today would be the day because I was feeling so good. So I get on the practice board. Me and Spellman are warming up and I'm shaking, like uncontrollably shaking. Every time I bring my hand up to the board, like, I don't know how I was, how I managed to stay. Well, I didn't stay steady this match, but I managed to throw well. I ended up getting the win five to four. I averaged an 80. But it was such a weird match because, like I said, I was shaking so much and I was rushing myself, but I was still hitting my targets pretty well. But when I was missing, I was missing really bad. So the opening leg, I started strong. I hit a 177 to leave myself 24 after 12 darts. So I'm sitting on 24 after 12 darts going for this 13 dart game to start off. My first dart at the double 12, I hit a double nine. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is bad. So now I go down to the double three, miss, miss. Spellman comes up. I don't remember if he was on an out or not, but regardless, I got three more darts at my double. Miss, miss, miss. Spellman comes up and wins the leg and he won the bowl. So that was to steal the throw and start the second leg with a 1-0 lead. And I completely blew it. So he gets the win. I, like I said, I'm shaking. That's why I hit that double nine. So now I'm just like, all right, well, at least I can score decent. So I still was scoring well. And we went back and forth the whole match. We held throw all the way until the last leg. So 1-1, 2-2, 3-3, 4-4, and then eventually 5-4. The second to last leg, Spellman missed. 
I think it was like five or six, no, it might have even been more than that. Uh, oh, geez, I can't remember, but he, he was missing a lot of darts at double, which is not like him. So me sitting back here, he was up four, three on me. And I'm like, okay, well, this, you know, my day is over. I'll get ready to chalk my next match. But he misses three darts. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll keep scoring and try to work my way down. And I did. And then he went up there, same thing. I'm like, well, at least I tried. And then he missed three more darts. And I was able to come up from behind and steal that leg to bring it to 4-4 four, four to the sudden death leg. So I know that he's, you know, not feeling that well after missing those match darts. So I know I need to throw really, really well this leg to have a chance. And I didn't. <laughs> he scored down the board and he beat me. I was in triple digits when he was thrown at a double. And same thing, he started missing doubles again. And I'm just sitting back there like, well, if he's going to leave the door open, like, I got to try to take advantage of it. So I don't remember how many darts he missed, but eventually I was down to 112. And I missed my single 12, or I missed my first triple 20. And, you know, in a situation like that, it's so important to get that first triple because then it's a lot of pressure off you. It's like, okay, just single double. But when you miss that first single, it's like, okay, now I have to hit this triple on the second dart. So I hit, I, thankfully I hit low on the 20 because the way my darts come in, if I miss high, that completely blocks the shot. So I was able to sneak a dart on top of it and hit that triple 20. So now I scored 80, 32 left. I had to take a step back because I was shaking so much. Uh, my nerves were getting the best of me. So I take a step back, take a couple deep breaths and I go up, I'm still shaking. I throw and it hit the very bottom corner of the double 16. So when I missed low on that double 12 in the first leg, you know, I hit the double nine. That's kind of how this start was. It was like really low, but it barely got in that bottom corner and I ended up getting the win. So that was an absolutely crazy match. And after that, I ended with the 80 and yes, I was shaking, but my darts were still feeling pretty good. So I was like, all right, cool. Like I got this win. I got a lot of adrenaline. I got some momentum. And then they announced that I'm playing Danny Lauby on the stream board. So that definitely messed with me mentally a little bit because I mean, Lauby's one of the best in North America and he just got back from Germany on the World Cup and it's going to be on the stream. And I think it might have been on PDC TV too. I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I'm going to talk to some guys and see if I'm going to be allowed to upload this match because I would love to be able to upload it and promote it on Bullshot because, you know, maybe we can get some different eyes on it and just help grow the sport, help promote Champ Darts, help promote the PDC and PDC TV and stuff. But long story short, I'm getting long winded here. So me and Danny go up to the stage and start throwing. Now I am not shaking anymore, but my darts are not hitting anything. I was at the point to where if I just hit a triple 20, usually when I hit a triple 20, it's like, yeah, I hit the triple 20. That's what I was aiming for. But now when I was hitting the triple 20, it was like, wow, that was lucky. I was in a very bad spot mentally. And Peter on the announcing was even because he knows me back from Chicago. He even said like, Nick's very good at managing his emotions. And I usually am. And you guys know, I always preach, you know, keep your emotions under control, positive mindset, positive body language. But mentally i was in a very bad spot this game and my emotions were getting the best of me and then they were saying like well nick is showing motions now and it was just because i was throwing so bad and i was hitting so many triple ones a lot of single ones so i, I tried going down to the 19s and i was hitting the threes so it was just all over the place but thankfully danny was also throwing pretty bad and i don't mean any disrespect by saying that but i mean he'll be the first to tell you i think he threw an 80 three which is low for Danny and so I ended up getting the win we were same thing I think we held throw all the way through tied one one two two three three four four and I won the bowl so I happened to grab the fifth leg from him and kind of like that Spellman match I had going into that last leg I told myself like okay like now's the time I need to score now's the time I need to hit my darts I opened up with the 121 and then I go 180 and then I go 100. So I left myself with 100 after nine darts. So I felt good, but that I, I scored, but it took me six darts to take out that 100. So that's kind of where I really struggled. But 
I mean, like I said, so I, I ended up getting the win. I'm not even that happy about it because my darts were so bad and Danny's darts weren't good too. You know, I would have rather, how do I say this? I'm not gonna say I would have rather lost and thrown well, but I was more negative on myself with the win because I threw bad and Danny threw bad. I would have been more positive had I thrown well and Danny threw well and he beat me. Uh, I've said this before, my mental state always comes from how my darts are. If I lose a match but I throw well, I'm still really happy. If I win a match but I throw bad, I'm gonna be really tough on myself. And that's what it came down to. And I, I wouldn't call myself a slow thrower, but I'm definitely kind of methodical with my throwing. And especially playing as someone like Laubi, I might look like a really slow player because Laubi is so fast. And the announcers were saying that maybe that was getting in Danny's head because he's used to throwing really fast. But really what was messing with Danny was the way the iPad was angled. Since he's lefty and he stands a little bit to the left, he could see himself throwing in the reflection of the iPad. So from his peripheral, which is, I mean, right next to the dartboard, he could see his arm going back. He could like make eye contact with himself. And that's a very hard situation to play under. I have played in places where I can see reflections off, you know, posters, mirrors, whatever it is. And it's very easy to say, well, just don't look at it, ignore it. But when you're in the situation in a competitive match and you see that, it definitely is going to mess with you. So going back to what I was saying, like, yes, I won and it's my biggest win I've ever gotten. But at the same time, I'm not even really thrilled about it. I was more disappointed than anything. Like if you watch the match, like I was shaking my head no, because I don't, it was just a really weird match. Both of us didn't shoot well. And I just managed to get some doubles when I needed to. And I think that's a part of my game that is my strongest part of the game. Sometimes I get in these gritty matches and I'm not scoring that well, or maybe I am scoring well, but if someone leaves the door open for me, I'm pretty good at getting those doubles to take advantage of those missed opportunities. So against Spellman, when he was missing those doubles, you know, I was coming from behind and taking them out when I had my shots at it. He may have had more darts at the double, but when I had my opportunities, I was able to hit it. Uh, the first leg against Laubi, uh, he missed one or two darts at a double, and I went up with 74, and I had one look at the double, because I had a single 14, single 20, one look at that double, and I nailed it. So I was able to take my chances when they were there, but just overall, my darts were not good. So that's why I say it was like the weirdest day of darts ever, because... I beat Alex Spellman, I beat Danny Lau... Well, I, sh I shouldn't even say I beat Danny Lauby because he really beat himself. Danny Lauby did not throw Danny Lauby darts. I mean, you guys just saw him in Germany in the World Cup. If he threw even half as good as he did in Germany, he would have whooped me. So I don't even like to say that I beat him. He beat himself in that match. But I don't know. I Like I said, it was just a super weird day. My darts were sometimes there, they weren't, but at the end of the day, I was just very disappointed with myself. And I didn't even get to my last match, so my final match, I don't even want to talk about this match that much because this was just terrible. I threw a 69. In a top 16 match, I threw a 69. When I threw against Laubi, my darts were bad. I still threw a 76, which is not good, but I expected it to be worse. I threw a 69 in a top 16 match, and I lost to... Gary French. It was the first time I met him. He was a really cool guy, really nice guy. And he actually went on to play Larry Butler after that and beat him. And he threw way better in that match than he did against me. Our match was really scrappy. We were missing a lot of darts still. But when he went on to play Butler, I think he threw like an 85 or 86 and beat him. And just, he started a little slow. Butler, I think, went up 3-1 on him. But man, did he really close that match. It was really cool to watch. But anyway, guys, so that's a Friday recap. Here I am talking about making short videos and this video is up to 15 minutes. So you can imagine how long this video would have been if I recorded at home a full recap. So I plan on coming on here and doing a couple more short videos. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning I'll recap Saturday or depending on Saturday, Sunday go, I just might, you know, do a double recap when I get home. But this was such like a weird, big day of darts for me. I wanted to make a single video for this. So Thank you so much for watching, guys. Click some of the videos that popped up. If they do, uh, I'm uploading this from my phone so I don't have all my equipment, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, 
I'm heading back to the Dart Hall in a few minutes here for today's event. And then, of course, I'll be there tomorrow. So make sure you guys tune in on Dart Connect, watch the matches, watch the live stream on Champ Darts. If you are not a subscriber of PDC TV, make sure you go check that out too because we're getting streamed on there. Uh, these weekends are huge for North American darts because this is where the best talent gets to go and play and it's being streamed everywhere. So we need to support. We need to make this work because darts is getting huge here, guys. I'm rambling. Sorry. I'll see you all in the next one, guys, and shoot well.